okay, girls, and your names first? Gronje, Maria, Siobhan. And the school? Loretta Grammar School. Uh, Siobhan, if you wouldn't mind starting up, tell me a little bit about the project. Well, basically we were trying to find out the degradation rate of photogradable plastic, so we decided after help from Maria's uncle who had problems with photogradable plastic that we would um, actually set out to find if photogradable plastic does degrade in Irish summer climate. So we set out and we exposed different types of plastic to simulated conditions. Uh, the simulator had UV lights and we exposed the plastic to the UV lights. The ones in the May conditions were exposed for 20 hours and the ones in the July conditions were exposed for 16 hours a day. Uh, we then, it started, the plastic started to degrade within the simulator. As you can see here, we use the ASTM D882 methods, which is an American standardized testing method. And it is an American standardized testing method because it is used all over the world to test different products. And it is very uh, reliable and you can compare it to other results. Well, it's obviously a very topical subject at the minute. Yeah, um, our results, although um, we had photogradable plastic, we also compared it to a non photogradable plastic just to see what, what, exec what exactly the results would show. And we actually found out that the photogradable plastic did break down a lot easier, the exposed plastics and the controls. Um, but it also showed that although they did break down, they didn't break down completely. So when the farmer came back next spring um, and plowed it back into the fields, because it's broken down by sunlight, it wasn't breaking down any further and it would just lie there in the soil. Um, so we have proven that um, photogram plastic does not work as it's supposed to in the Irish climate. I suppose the next step is then what do you replace it with? Is that something that you thought of? No, well, it does start to degrade, so we probably still could use it in the thing compared to normal plastic. So it, it's better than just using plastic, but then again, the prices are different. So if it's more expensive compared to your average plastic, then it's up to the farmer really in his. And how long have you been working on the project? Uh, well, we started working on the project when we came back in September, back to school again. Okay, girls, your names, please. Megan, Megan, Jessica. And your school? Loretta Oma. Uh, just tell me a wee bit then about your project. Um, it's about the assessment of mustard seeds and how they collect um, metal from contaminated soil. And how on earth did you come up with that concept? Um, we all like the idea of doing a biological subject because that's a very strong subject for us. So we're just kind of casting around and then we found this and we thought it sounded really interesting. So we'd like to explore it and investigate and how it works. And how long have you been working on the project? Um, well, once we got our letter to say we were accepted, we started work, which was a week after Halloween. So about four months. Yeah, four months. It's obviously a very topical subject. Was that part of the reason you chose it? Uh, yeah, there's many aspects to it, and it was good to try and work on it. <laughs> so how, how did you actually get your results? What sort of uh, research did you do? First we did a lot of background research to see how the concept was thought of and um, we then we decided to develop our method and basically we started growing a lot of these Indian mustard seeds. Um, we grew, grew 25 pots and then after um, when they had germinated we separated them and watered um, 15 of them with three different types of metal and kept them for control. So mustard seeds is a very specific thing. What set you off on that route? Well, there was a list of seeds that could be used for this, but and there was Indian mustard, but it didn't say what metals the Indian mustard seeds could be used to extract. So we thought we'd try and investigate what metals the Indian mustards could extract.